I can't believe we haven't talked about this yet, but I have to say this, that since Hayden Christensen is making his big, big comeback now in Star Wars with the Obi-Wan series, with now the Ahsoka series too, as we saw, he hasn't missed a step. The dude is off the charts athletic. You guys kind of forget that we also had a comeback in the Mandalorian series too, and that was of course Ahmed Best with his portrayal of Kelleran Beck. Years and years of speculating how did Grogu survive Order 6? and how he escaped the Jedi Temple. In fact, it was Ahsoka who told Din Djarin. Now it comes full circle. We know that Keller and Beck saved Grogu. What happened after he saved him from the Jedi Temple? We don't know. We only know that they survived by leaving with a Nubian ship, perhaps going to Naboo, meeting with Jar Jar, who knows. But as I said earlier, with all this resurgence of Hayden Christensen and Ahmed Best, we saw Hayden come back in the Ahsoka series as Anakin. So the possibility of actually Keller and Beck coming back to this series too is very, very high. We never saw what happened with Kaloran Beck. I did a video just before the Ahsoka series started, all the Jedi that are alive during the timeline of Ahsoka because their death was never really confirmed. And what gives me hope that Kaloran Beck might be back, maybe in the Ahsoka series, maybe beyond, is what Ahmed Best actually said about his character, Kaloran Beck, and about his future in Star Wars. I want to focus on a couple of excerpts he said, and then we we will discuss his future because he specifically mentions that he wants to be back, aka, you know, Star Wars talk. Disney might have told him to not speak further on this, but I believe that he will definitely be back as Jedi Master Kaloran Beck, not only in these future episodes, but who knows, perhaps we will have an entire story with Kaloran Beck in some way. I think with the reception that Lucasfilm is seeing, they will move towards that direction. We have discussed many years how how will Grogu be saved? How was he saved? Because we know he wasn't killed during Order 66. We finally find in Episode 4 that Kelloran Beck was the one, the sabered hand, who took him and saved him aboard the Nubian starship, presumably going for Naboo, where it will be an epic moment if they meet with Jar Jar Binks, the Naboo representative who wants to help and Jar Jar be redeemed for what he did in Attack of the Clones, giving emergency powers to Palpatine and so forth. I don't want to go too much into that because I am waiting for an answer on that front, but he specifically talked about the Force as well, and this is why Ahmed Best deserves another chance to portray himself as Kaloran Beck. This will give you an understanding of how much this actor is devoted to Star Wars. He said, The Force is not just a thing that the Jedi tap into when they want to throw something heavy. The Force is this thing that is constantly moving. You're always interacting with it. I see it as like... If you're underwater and you're moving through water, that's what it feels like moving with the Force. So trusting the Force means trusting these ebbs and flows of this feeling. You can move with it. And then he goes specifically into the clone battles that he had as Kelleran back in Episode 4. How he was able to defeat all those clone troopers, as I said in the review, there were exactly three waves coming at him, and he disposed of two waves easily. The third wave was a little bigger, so he had to escape. But in comparison with the other Jedi, he fared much, much differently and much, much better. He goes on to say, in every single situation of this, meaning as the clones are attacking him, I'm really trying to tune into this bigger feeling of the Force. As Keller and Beck, when I'm being attacked by clone troopers, I feel them coming. The waves of the Force are moving me before they even show up, so I know what's about to happen because I feel the wave, and then I react to the wave. Same thing on the speeder, I can feel the ship moving, so then I react to it. I see him really having a lot of trust in this ability to surf the force. This last sentence, surfing the force, is something that no actor or even George Lucas, the one who wrote Star Wars, ever said it like this. This shows the genius of Ahmed Best, trust me. He put the force as him being a surfer on the waves on the sea. This is beautiful to actually articulate because a surfer can actually see the waves before they form, so he knows 
how to navigate those waves and not crash. Do you understand now what I said earlier that he deserves another chance? He really is one of the smartest Star Wars actors to ever speak on this subject, to ever speak on the Force. Not that there hasn't been previously, but this one from Ahmed Best really just shocked me. But then comes the really shocking part. The one that I think will definitely change how we see Star Wars in the future. This is the moment when I think Lucasfilm should put a lot of weight behind what Ahmed Best just said and expand their universe more and more. Not needless characters who are killed off the moment we see them. Like, I hate the fact that in The Bad Batch, these beautiful, great clones are introduced. Brave clones that have thought things through and are killed immediately on that episode. I understand the sacrifice, but characters like Keller and Beck do not come often. And the fans loving this character so much in the Ahmed Best comeback shows you what they should be planning for in the future. And I think Dave Filoni has captured this. Ahmed Best continues his interview and this, as I said, is the shocking part. He goes on to say, I see Kaloran as this journeyman Jedi who became a professor, who wants to be a teacher, not a reluctant teacher, not someone who's thrown into teaching, who wants to influence, who wants to show Padawans how to become a greater version of themselves. He is, of course, referencing as well Star Wars Jedi Temple Challenges, a brief show that he was involved in as Kaloran Beck back in 2020. This is how the character took form, at first, it was not something serious in the Star Wars canon lore, but now with episode 4, it became serious. Keller and Beck is here to stay. And finally, he gives us the last inkling of hope. He finishes by saying, I want everyone who watches Star Wars to look at Keller and Beck and go, I believe that guy. I want to follow that guy. Where does he go? What happens next? I think all the best stories are stories that leave you wondering what happens next? I don't want this to be the end of legacy. I don't want this to be the end of the story. I want this just to be the beginning, a new beginning, especially through Kaloran Beck. Obviously, he spoke very highly of Kaloran Beck's story as well he should, but what he's trying to do here and what he's trying to say is really Kelran Beck has not ended his journey yet. I think Ahmed Best knows something that we do not and that Lucasfilm, after this positive reaction, will put a lot of weight behind it. It will invest more time and story in this character. Where does he go after this? What happened after Order 66 with this guy? Was he ever captured or killed by Inquisitors or did he survive past the original trilogy and maybe made it to the Mandalorian timeline where we could possibly see Keller and Beck in this present timeline of the Mandalorian, not just in Grogu flashbacks where he saved him. This, I think, would be just an epic moment because a character that Ahmed Best put a lot of time into, Jar Jar Binks, was not only criticized but was never really finished. Jar Jar Binks was just a character that was left behind by George Lucas because of the criticism and we never got to really see what happened with the Naboo senator. Even amongst the Gungans, he became a general, so he had a real status. He was referenced in a novel, but nothing became of that really. So it wasn't just unjust what the fans did with Jar Jar Binks back in the prequel days, but even now Jar Jar Binks does not have a finish line. We don't know what happened to that character. And I think all of us that you are watching this video would love to know what happened to Jar Jar Binks. At least, even if he died, we would have a dot to that storyline. And I trust that Lucasfilm and Star Wars will not do the same mistake again with Keller and Beck. I plead them to not just use Keller and Beck as a cameo to save Grogu and that's it. We never find out about Keller and Beck again. I really think that Ahmed Best and Lucasfilm are working closely to develop more of Keller and Beck's story, and I think the fans would just love that to their core. We would really want not only to see Ahmed Best back, but to see if he ever was involved with saving the Jedi archives, continuing its legacy, and so forth. Let me know what do you guys think in the comments. I would love to know that. 